decimal places. OK, so we want to approximate this. Perfect. So I have to have an equation. If I don't have an equation, I cannot use Newton's method. I have to have an equation. I have to have a function. So if I don't have a function that is equal to 0, which is I have the function, I have the equation, I cannot solve. I have to solve something, an equation that has a function in it, and then I can use Newton's method. But I need to create all these. So how do I create a function that has this as a solution? Very easy. x to the eighth power equals 500. How come? Because I have to take, apply the eighth root to both sides. And then I get x equals the eighth root of 500 which is the approximation of this. But I have to have an equation, I have to have a function. So x to the 8 equals 500. This is number 1, this is my equation. Number 2, I have to have a function. I have to have a function that is set equal to 0. No problem. So I have the equation, I have the function. Number three, I have to say that f of x equals x to the eighth minus 500 continuous as a poly function. So then I have to find f of something that is positive and f of something that is negative. And say this is my interval, this is where I start. And then I will say by IVT, by the intermediate value theorem, I will find a C in the interval that I don't have yet, such that f of C is 0. And then I start Newton's method. So first I have the equation that eventually has the solution I'm looking at. That's why I chose power 8, because it was the index 8 here. So I created the function. Here's my function. It's continuous. It's a polynomial function. It's continuous everywhere. Now I have to put this in the calculator and find a one unit interval where the solution exists and say this is positive, this is negative, or whatever I find. Then I put the interval here. And then I say I'll find C now. So remember, the IVT only says there is a solution between this and this. That's all it says. If you remember when we talked about this in chapter 2, I said IVT does not give us the solution. It only gives us a one unit interval where the solution exists. And I said, wait till chapter 4. We're going to study Newton's method and you're going to be able to solve any equation you want. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen and is this a good enough uh, problem for you? Yes. Okay, perfect. We can still choose another. I, I, it's up to you. If this is not good enough, we can choose another problem. Okay, so of course, I don't know what the eighth root of 500 is. So I have to, if you want, cheat a little bit. Because I don't, I'm not going to uh, keep you here 10 uh, hours for me to plug in stuff to see where the interval is. So I'm going to look. So I'm going to put power 1 over 8 and see roughly where the solution is. So it's 2.17, fine. So when I go to y equals and I put in x to the 8, which I don't need to anymore because I know where it is, right? But this is what I should do normally. x to the 8 minus 500. I already know the solution is between 2 and 3. So I plug in 2, I'll plug in 3, I see there is a sign change, so I'll say right away the solution must be between 2 and 3. So f of, oh, I didn't mean that, what happened? Okay, so 
So it's uh, negative for 2, positive for 3. So negative, positive, 2 comma 3. I found my one unit interval to show all the steps. Continuous, changes sign between 2 and 3. And by IVT, there must be a solution such that f of c is 0. And now I start my Newton's method. And I choose the initial value, or whatever you want to call it. I like it as 0 as being 2, maybe 3. We'll see in a moment. I just have to make sure that the starting point is not creating f prime to be 0, is not making f prime 0. So Newton's method, or Newton's function, x minus the function at the top, and the derivative in the denominator, which is 8x to the 7th. So if I start at 2 or I start at 3, I'm safe. 2 does not make this 0. 3 does not make this 0. It's all safe. So I'll start. You have this video. I posted this video for Newton's method. So I record. What, what is going on here? Why am I getting? OK. Uh, so uh, remember, if you want to go back through the steps, please watch that video again. I posted this. OK, so go back to y equals. I insert in there x, and then minus, and then parentheses, of course, all the way, parentheses again, and divide by, in parentheses, because it's a product, unless you put divided by 8 and divided by x to the 7th. Be very careful. So 8 and x to power 7, and close. No, close. OK, perfect. So now I have the function. Get out of there. Go to variables. Go to y variable. Go to the function. Call y1. That's where I have my function, my Newton's function, and plug in 2. That's what I want. OK, and then the next one is second and entry, but replace the 2 by the previous answer. And now every time you click, 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 it will do that again and again and again. So they want us eight decimal digits. So we have one, two, three so far. Notice that I didn't copy those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK, one more. Now everything is two, four, six, eight, nine. Is this what we wanted to do? Is this good enough? Or So I'm just going to copy the last one. I don't even remember how many I did. So 2.17455.9276. So uh, what did we, how many digits did we get with um, 500 raised to power 1 over 8? I'm just curious now. OK, good. Is this what we wanted to do? Do we have anything else, other questions on Newton's method? Anyone? Is anyone with me? I have no questions. questions. Yes? A question on this? Or something else? OK. Anything else you want to, or need help with, or you want to go over? Anything else? OK, can I go back then to 4.9 for other problems from 4.9? OK, yes. perfect. So let's go back to 4.9. If you remember something, I can always stop and go back. OK, I'm going to share my screen and go back to 4.9. Let's clear this. I don't understand why I'm getting that, uh, but as long as it disappears and it's not in the way, it's fine. OK, 4.9. I would like us to practice a little bit more. 
I'd like us to look at um, again something like this. Uh, we looked at the trig function, if I, if I remember correctly. We looked at um, Okay, what was where was that with two that we just looked at? I don't remember where it was. But that was the last problem we looked at. And I also want to look at um, velocity acceleration. So 65 through 70 and uh, any problem from before to find the function. So if you'd like to choose Please choose. Um, would you like to look at 53? Yep. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, so let's look at 53. Feel free to choose if you want something else. I think I see the second derivative there, which is x to negative 2. Of course, x has to be greater than 0 because this is basically 1 over x squared. So it could be negative, but not zero. That's all I meant to say. So we are given that f of 1 is 0 and f of 2 is also 0. OK, so let's see. So, oh, yes, I, I, I need to say this so I, I don't want to forget. So if we are given f prime, we have to find f. If we are given f, we have to find uppercase f. Um, why is this important? Why is this notation important for chapter 5? For the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay? So in this case, we are given the second derivative. We will find the first derivative, and then we'll find lowercase f. If the problem is giving us lowercase f, then the notation has to be uppercase f as the antiderivative of f of x. OK. So coming back to our problem. So we're given that the second derivative is x to negative 2. We have to find the first derivative. So let me refresh your memory, because I'm assuming you didn't look at this. So to find the function whose derivative is this, we will add 1 to the power, and we will divide by that result, by that power. But of course, plus a constant c. Let's rewrite this for a moment. So this is negative 1 over x plus a constant c. I'm going to ask myself, do I have any information about f prime? No. I do not have any information about f prime. OK. So then I have to continue. I am given f prime. So now I'm continuing by finding f of x. You can stop me, please. You remember, always stop me if you have a question, always. So then f. I have to think, which function prime is negative 1 over x? Which function do we always differentiate to get 1 over x? Anyone? Ln of x. Thank you very much. It should be the absolute value. However, I'm not going to use the absolute value because I'm specifically told it's always positive. So there is no need for absolute value. But I'm going to write it because that's the general case. Plus, which function prime gives us c? Cx. Very good. Plus a constant d. So again, this is redundant. I'm just going to put a sign here. 
only because we are told that from the very beginning that x is positive. But I have to write it initially. Okay, fine. So my, ne my next step is trying to find these. I don't have them, but I am told that f of 1 is 0 and f of 2 is also 0. So let's take it one at a time. The equation f of 1 is 0 means I plug in 1 everywhere where I can and the answer is 0. When I plug in 1 here, I get natural log 1 which is 0. Minus 1 times 0 is 0. When I plug in 1 here, oh, I saw that. It shouldn't do it because I, I took care of it. I'm not sure what is going on. It has a mind of its own. So C, right? x1 uh, plus d. So I found an equation. C plus d must equal 0. So they have to be opposites of each other. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Leave it alone. Now we're going to work on this. f of 2. When I plug in 2, I have this time natural log 2. When I plug in 2, I have plus 2c and then plus d and that equals 0. And this is a system of two equations with two variables. Okay, easy, because I will solve the first one for C or for D, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to say C is the opposite of D, and I'm going to plug it in here. So negative natural log 2, 2 times c, but c equals negative d, so that's negative 2d and plus d equals 0. So then natu nat negative natural log 2, and this is minus d, or I move it to the other side, equals d. So if d equals negative natural log 2, c will be the opposite. c will be natural log 2. So I found my solutions. And not solutions, you know what I mean, the, the uh, constants, d and c. I have to plug them back in the function. So now this is what I was looking for. Negative natural log x. I don't need to put it in absolute value because I'm given x greater than 0. And then a plus c times this. So plus x natural log 2 and plus d, which is minus natural log 2. And this is it. So I can um, set up a function. I was told that x is positive. And I was given two initial conditions. When I get to the function, f of 1 is 0 and f of 2 is 0. These two conditions helped us determine the two constants, c and d. Now. In some books, maybe even in ours, um, you may find C1 and C2. It's up to you. You can denote these constants by whatever you want. If you want to use C1 and C2, use C1 and C2. If you want to use C and D, use C and D. If you want to use M and N, use whatever you want. It doesn't matter, but just be consistent in both equations. You, you have to have the same thing, of course. Any questions on this?